So, like, do you just make these on the regular? Oh, it's me, the sincerity baby <laughs> question about the theme <laughs> yeah um, well i have many i guess but i have one specifically about the words was that did it say i forget what it was the capacity was it saying the word earnest or was it saying the word honest in the weird baby voice uh it was saying that uh i can't help but be earnest earnest okay i believe okay. the i believe the lyrics to that song are i'm the sincerity baby wah <laughs> I have, I can't help, I'm just a baby, I can't help but be earnest, wah. And I haven't yet, de- I haven't yet developed the neurological capacity for irony, wah. I feel like by making that theme song, though, you're showing that we do have the capacity for irony, because I feel like that's very ironic. Well, I'm being ironic playing a sincere character. <laughs> and it it's not a violation of the rules because the sincerity hour starts when the song ends. Ah, okay, okay. Mm. Is the sincerity baby's name Ernest? Could be, yeah. <laughs> the importance of being earnest. Yeah, see, when we're done with the the robot voice game, we can do a game where I play a character called Ernest the Sincerity Baby. And <laughs> instead of the robot voice modulator, I will just use the baby voice modulator. Jesus Christ. Please, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one would be real fucking bad for an hour. All right. Let's do some sincerity hour shit. Um, so I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about like cozy and cottage core things. Is everyone everyone familiar with those concepts? Kelly already hates my question. <laughs> he hates no. it so much. He doesn't even you can leave. I wish no. to return to the woods. Is cottage core just like now, I should remind you before you finish the sentence that there are no bits allowed during the sincerity hour, and we have started. <laughs> I was going to ask, is, is Cottage Core just like wearing cozy stuff? And I don't know. What else? What else is that? What, is, what does it entail? Yeah. So it's like, I guess it's kind of like in a, like a thing online right now. It's like an aesthetic where it's like, imagine the, like the vibe of living in a cottage in the woods and you're like, the sun is streaming through the trees and you have a garden that you go and tend and there's wildflowers everywhere and there's like bunnies hopping through it and you're like reading a book in your garden swing and um yeah just like that kind of vibe um and so i like guess i i feel like there's been a rise in it but i don't know if that's because i've been seeking it out more and my algorithms are showing it to me and i was wondering if this is something that is real this like kind of like cozy are people seeking out these cozy things are they more prominent or is this just like something that's happening to me personally (laughs) because of the algorithms and social media there is definitely a more of a push towards it i think that people are kind of trying to rebel against the whole idea of like the quote-unquote grind set instead of like focusing on always having the hustle and always having the 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 grind and all that stuff that you're you can just sit back and be comfortable and yeah do something as simple as reading a book or uh especially during the pandemic you had well you had people getting into bread making and canning which made my life a pain in the ass to be completely honest (laughs) but because i've i've canned for years now and it's like during the pandemic i couldn't find mason jars like for a good year and it was a right pain in the ass and Josh is going to start his own show. It's going to be called Yes, We Can. And he's going to teach us all how to can things. I mean, I would totally. I'm basically out of a bunch of my friends here in Edmonton. I am like the the dad, basically, where it's like if you need like advice on how to like do some repairs or like need help doing like some around the house stuff. It's like, oh, we'll just call old, old Josh up. He knows what to do. We'll call him dad. Yeah. See, Josh is like cozy, wholesome, cottagecore <laughs> Edmonton guy. Exactly. Learn how to can. It's good for you. But buy your mason jars 
a little bit at a time so I can actually get some when it's time for me to do it. I guess is that with the the jar shortage, is that like, I guess the people who go to the gym all the time, how they feel like the first week of January. Oh, I can completely. All the new people are there like taking up all the machines. 100%. I was like going in there. I'm like, where the fuck are all the lids? Like, I never have this problem. Yeah, I guess with the I I haven't personally noticed an uptick in cottage core um stuff uh necessarily. Uh but again, like I I'm I'm probably just not as plugged in to that type of stuff. Um but I can definitely see that like related um related to what Josh was saying about um kind of the rebellion against the grind set and also just like as a form of escapism from what seems like a super fucked up real world. Um, not that your cottage core world isn't real, but you can kind of avoid some of the, the stressors of, of daily life. Um, yeah. I, I guess it that. doesn't, it doesn't have to be specifically like cottage core, but like even like the like cozier things. Um, like I've noticed like a lot of games that are coming out now, or maybe it's just, again, maybe it's just the ads that I see in the accounts that I see that are like, Hey, here's a game where you like rearrange a house or here's a game where you make friends or mm-hmm. like, here's a game where you help people cross over to the other side. Uh, um, yes. Is that, the, what, the is that what animal crossing is? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually that's a good point. Spirit fair should be called animal crossing. Um, I mean, that's that's kind of the appeal. Like my wife, um, she plays Stardew Valley. I've played it a couple times and like it's not my thing uh, because, you know, cleaning a bunch of logs and rocks out of a yard isn't. It's not my jam exactly, but she loves it because it is so repetitive and you're doing a lot of these like mundane tasks, but you have a lot of control over it. And it like I don't know, it gives you like a structure to work around. So I can see the appeal of that for sure. That type Mm -hmm. of game where there's not like a. I don't know. There's not like an an evil dragon to defeat and there's not some some quest you have to go on. Um, yeah. I think it was when I was taking like game design courses that I read this article about they they coined the concept as garden games. And this was definitely before Stardew Valley. So there wasn't necessarily a good literal example of a garden game to point at. But the the premise of the how they were describing it was that people wanted to make and play games that were a lot of what you all just described which is like less pressure calmer warm and fuzzy feeling and you kind of get to sit in a little pocket of some sort and kind of curate your experience and your environment like in the way that you do with a garden right like the the appeal the real life appeal of a garden which i think does tie into the the cottage core stuff is that you are kind of just doing something a bit meditative and you're getting away from whatever else you're doing in your life and you're just sort of developing like this nurturing experience with your plants you're you're kind of curating the like the layout and all these things and you're also screaming at magpies for going after your strawberries. Yeah. That's very cathartic. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I mean, there's there was examples like Harvest Moon and Rune Factory even before Stardew Valley, though. I was going to say, Harvest Moon's been around for years. Yeah. Well, I I, I guess the, the, the point I was trying to make was that they weren't saying garden games had to be literal. Like, mm. for me, uh, Subnautica is kind of a garden game because I like going back to my space where my base is and i like to kind of curate the the layout and the appearance of it and there's definitely something that appeals to me in in games like that and i've heard a lot of people describe a feeling of you know being kind of our age now being in your you know in your 30s or so and compared to when you were 16 just not wanting to play hard games anymore or playing games on an easier mode because you're like i don't want to have that that Elden Ring experience. Like this is my relaxing time. I want to play a game that I feel like I'm going to get through and win and be done with. So, and I, I do think those things tie into adulthood in a way like, or into, cause I, I, I don't know if that's been true for like every generation of game players or if there is something to do with 
the real world like now in the present year couldn't i'm not certain but um with um with like more laid back gaming experiences like you had the example of like um like elden ring and how how just insanely hard some of these games are and um for me like the appeal of something that's either repetitive or something that is just you know more accessible and easy to play is is almost because there's the excess of entertainment now like i don't just want to play a video game i want to play a game and listen to a podcast um at the same time so like i don't necessarily want to be 100 percent focused on this um i want yeah i don't know uh a game like fallout where sure you can play it on really hard but you can also set it really easy and just kind of go around and blow some shit up while you're listening to something else um i can see the appeal of that for sure I have that with other things in my life where, I mean, it's it's totally invisible now, but this little setup I have to hold all the cameras and hold all the microphones and hold all the weird erotica books that I'm collecting is <laughs> like, it is a thing that has, it keeps growing in stages. Like I mentioned, okay, I just added this kind of mount so we can have a dice mic that, you know, doesn't work. Or I've added this little shelf to it. And it is, it is like a form of gardening because you're kind of just curating a thing you're growing it a little, you're shaping it to the way you want. And I noticed this trend with a lot of the things I do um, when somebody pointed this out to me over, uh, it was a project I was working on. Uh, it was the one that we we streamed on the show when I made that Burning Man video. And because I was on EI at the time, I had so much time to fiddle with basically every aspect of it. And I was kind of at the point where I was thinking it was going to be done. And there was like, ah, oh, there's one more thing I can kind of fix now that I figured out how to fix this. And, uh, yeah, this was, this was my partner at the time who kept coming over and being like, okay, you're, you're telling me one more week on this thing. And I was like, no, I swear. (laughs) Um, but what she pointed out, she was like, well, like you're gardening, like this will, like a garden is never finished was I think her point. And you'll never be done as long as you are kind of like engaging with experience of gardening. Cause you can always pull a few more weeds. You can always trim a few more things, but to kind of tie back to what we were originally saying, I, I think in my life that does become a thing I really engage with as I get like adult stressors in my life compared to when I was just a kid. So, yeah, there's actually, I'm sorry. Did you, were you finished your thought? Yeah. Yeah. Th- that thought it was done. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, yeah, this is actually, so this is something I've discussed with Ryan as well. Um, cause that's something that I seek out is tends to be cozier things, um, that make you, feel like safe and like feel good but like also like maybe feel a little bit emotional or um yeah just like help you focus a little bit on introspection um and we were talking about the appeal of it and one of the appeals that ryan had pointed out was again that like going against the grind set thing but also kind of a for example stardew valley is like a it's something that you can track your progress in again like kelly said it's something you have control over And it's a thing that like you plant, you buy the seeds, you plant the thing, you make the money and then you can improve it, which is like something that's not necessarily very accessible for um, a lot of people our age. This like acquiring a place and like watching a continuous improvement. And I mean, not even just for people our age, but like in general, you you know, sometimes it feels like it's one step forward, three steps back sort of thing. So it's like it's kind of it's nice to have something where you've got like a bit of control and there's like forward advancement. You can, you know, constantly keep improving and setting something up. Um, And then, yeah, also, like Josh said, that that feel that you need to be like productive and you need to be doing things and you need to be like constantly moving forward, like to just like chill and be like, I can waste some time growing in a a fake garden right now. Mm hmm. Or like, yeah, it might be easier for me to go to the store and buy easier and probably cheaper for me to go to the store and buy this thing. But this is something that I find calming because I can see the results of it. So like I can go to the store, I can buy all the ingredients and I can bake this bread and I can be like, wow, this is something that I've accomplished. Or like I can, you know, like Josh said, you can like grow something in your garden and then can it. Really cool feeling. Um, And I'm wondering if maybe that's something that we're all kind of seeking yeah I, yeah, I think it is, but I also think that, like, cause your original question, you were you were talking about kind of seeing it 
advertise. So is, was your question sort of like, is this new or is this like a genuine movement or what was, what was, what was sort of the baseline question of? Yeah. So I guess I had two. The first one was, Hey, I've noticed this. Is it real? Do you guys experience it? Or is it something that's being curated at me specifically? Um, mm. And then I guess also like, as like a bunch of fucking dudes, <laughs> is it like, a, is it something that's like more catered towards women? Because I see a lot of, like a lot of the, women there are a lot of the people that are creating these content are women or identify as women or like they're and so i'm wondering if this is like more of a gendered thing and then i was my follow-up question was going to be why um is this like a thing that we're seeing so okay so when you're saying is this real you don't you're you're asking maybe less like is the feeling of like being cozy pilled real you're asking like is this uh is it real that like there's been more more of like the algorithmic push of it is that what you're more yeah asking. or like yeah is it like something that you guys have seen and it's like is it something that like people are creating more content for this or is it like is it filling a void that was already there is it filling niches that like you guys have seen previously uh i don't like for my own examples like uh i'm in a server with a bunch of people uh and one of the i mean it's called the ristorante for one thing because it's based around like a lot of people's hobbies as baking, cooking, brewing, canning, et cetera, et cetera. Just sort of trying to get into it, share your results kind of thing. You made a cool meal, tell us the process, show us some pictures. You'd make, you're making your own beer or just having a good beer. Send us a picture of that. What do you think of it kind of thing? And it's like creating more of a, a self-sustaining kind of thing there where it's like, you know how to cook. You don't have to eat out all the time. And, and then it's not even just a case of like, Oh, well, I, I know how to make hamburger help or I know how to make Mr. Noodles or something like that. I can make like a damn good meal and I can show it off for people and be proud of it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And that's that server's got uh, men, women of both cis and trans nature. Like just I think I think it's something that people in general just tend to get into. At least now, uh, particularly now, I think the pandemic really maybe boosted it a little bit like through some jumper cables on there and really boosted it up but i think it's always kind of been there in the background i think the idea of what we've talked about like the coziness of like gardening meaning doing something that is kind of like quiet and cozy and meditative and like curative like curating something i think that's definitely very real and i think people have always kind of discovered that as they move through life like people find the thing that is meditative for them uh i, I think of the it's probably like apocryphal but there was it was one of the major major roman emperors i think it was diocletian because he was the one that retired who was like all right i'm done with this i'm gonna go grow cabbages and like that that's the, what he wanted to do because like what is more stressful than running an empire? Eventually you just want to like be like, all right, I'm out. I'm going to go. Grow yeah, gonna go on a farm. Cabbages. Yeah. Like literally gardening with all my slaves. So I, I think that it is, um, I think it's a very real phenomenon that I think aging in a sort of healthy way leads you to find things that calm you down a bit. And in terms of, do I see it online? I don't, I probably haven't seen it in as pronounced a way of you. It might be part of what you're getting targeted with, but I, it, I would say there's definitely, I've seen an amount of like advertisers and such trying to appeal to that sense. Like if they're, you know, trying to sell you stuff from Ikea, like they're going to put a picture of somebody sitting in a breakfast nook with like a warm mug of tea in two hands and like it's snowing outside. There's definitely, I think there are definitely advertisers and marketers who are very much savvy enough to cater to that because they know it's out there and whether that's growing, I wouldn't be surprised because I think that, I don't know, we could probably get really rabbit holed into this, but there's definitely a lot of stressors in the world right now. And, you know, the world has always been stressful, but I think this social media and all the like connection of the information has made all those stressors very visible. So 
I think there are a lot of genuine efforts by people to be like, I, I, I want to do some canning because it helps me like not scroll Twitter. And I think there is also some cynical capitalizing of like, yeah, the world is stressful. You deserve <laughs> to buy yourself like a nice tea cozy off of Amazon. And also, why don't you bundle it with, you know, all of these things that will ha give you this sort of, what do you, would you call it? Cottage core aesthetic as opposed to doing something practical, right? There's the difference between buying shit to make your house look more cozy, like, I don't know, some weird fucking animal tapestries versus actually doing a thing that actually calms your brain that doesn't require so much outside input, you know? Yeah. Gee, capitalism really has, for sure, sure has put a strain on people. Why don't we fix it with more capitalism? Mm -hmm. Buy some I mean, things. That's been, the, that's been the solution for a long time now. Boy, howdy, this yep. capitalism thing seems to have some problems. What if we double down on it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fighting fire with fire, but just fighting capitalism with capitalism. Yeah, well, well, instead of having all these different companies, that's really stressful. What if we just made some super companies and then that's they just sold us everything? Point. Yeah, simple is better. Co sim like, co simple is very cottage core. Yeah, you know, you just you just buy all your stuff from Amazon. Don't worry about the local shops. They'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Ignore those closing signs. Yeah. Just think, the less time they have to spend at their shop, the more time they can spend at home making their home cozy. This exactly. actually reminds me of another sincere topic. It's it's unrelated, but it, it's related to this discussion of capitalism. Um, in our, we did a bonus episode recently on the show about um, the Union blockade of the Confederacy, and we focused a lot on the culture of blockade running and the contraband trade in the south during the civil war and um one of the one of the the odd little things that came up was the blockade runners the people in the contraband trade were basically seen as being disloyal and unpatriotic to the confederacy because they're not um they don't have the confidence in the confederacy to to just play along and, and not trade with the union and that influx of capitalism, you've got these like business owners and stuff who want to keep their business going. That's what starts to chip away at the solidarity of the plantation class. So you've got this great evil of slavery being slowly undermined by another great evil capitalism. Um, and they're kind of fighting each other. Uh, so it's it, it was an odd situation where you're like, yeah, go capitalism, get rid of the slavery. But. And then you also realize, ah, capitalism's going to be really shitty, too. Ah. And that's uh, I had a cousin who kind of pointed out some things about capitalism and how it actually played a big role in helping women become more independent. Mm -hmm. Because um, like in the 50s and stuff, it was like, you know, women were in charge of the like they were like, oh, it's you, you're, you stay at home. So you take care of the finances. But now suddenly you have control of this of the money, so you get to do decide what's spent on. Um, so yeah, that's. I remember being like, "No, there's nothing good about it," and then I was like, "Okay, well." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess it, it makes sense for the system because, like, the more people who are able to spend money in the system, it's like, of course, that's great for capitalism. Did we want to end the segment so Kelly can say whatever sarcastic, shitty thing he was thinking as soon as I brought up the topic? That's hurtful. <laughs> can i throw uh I'll, I'll, can i throw in one more hobby maybe into the pile of what we might consider we were talking about like um garden gardening type activities yeah um, hold on my wife is throwing stuff at me chocolate she's throwing chocolate at me okay oh well, it's even a heart shaped, a heart -shaped, -shaped chocolate <laughs> yeah, Aww. beautiful thank you i love you um I was going to throw in um, this idea of, you know, curating something that is is yours and you can go at a slow pace and you can, you know, kind of build something. Um, I was going to throw in kind of the mainstreaming relatively recently of hobbies like you could use Warhammer as a blanket term. But I knew mini you were going to say Warhammer. Yeah, mini, mini painting in general, um, just because of the idea that like, yes, at its core, it's a game, but there's tons of people in the hobby who have no intention of ever using it that way. Um, it purely is about painting and building something and whether you're whether you're painting something individually or making like more of a scene or a diorama, it does have that um, that more slow pace. You're doing something, you're taking your time, 
you can spend as much or as little time on a model as you want to. Um, but um, we talked about how, you know, a garden's never finished. You could say the same thing with with some of these models where you could I mean, you could spend weeks, months working on the same thing, adding tiny minuscule details if you want to um, and kit bashing stuff together. And yeah, the way I see that discussed, you know, on Twitter, on Instagram, in that community, it's it's very much the same type of appeal. Um, I mean, that's kind of why I gave it a shot. I, mean, I started painting when I was in grad school um, just because I needed I needed to do something that didn't involve reading words off of a page or off of a screen. Um, and so I was like, oh, I'll give this a shot. Um, and obviously it, it sucks when you start and you can't do anything, but like you slowly build up your skills and you feel like you're really building an arsenal of something and you can make stuff that you feel happy with and you're proud of, um, you know, when it's finished and you can take cool pictures and put them on Instagram. Um, yeah, it's, it, I kind of would put that in the same category of just kind of a feel good, slow paced hobby. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, yeah, when he started thinking, talking about hobbies and things, I was just like, oh, mm-hmm. you're a dude oh, yeah. that's talking about a cozy hobby. It's going to be Warhammer. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Warhammer or 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 some related miniature paint. I, I prefer, honestly, painting historical miniatures because it's like I feel like I have a bit more of a scaffold to go off of. Like, hey, this is what I'm trying to to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't I don't quite have the paralysis of choice that you have with with, you know, other things. Um you know, if I'm trying to paint a particular historical period. Um, but yeah, I, it, same applies to any of those, I would say. I'm surprised that you aren't into assembling those like miniature ships and bottles. No, I've never been I've never been much of a much of a model ship person and certainly not a ship and bottle person. I never tried. Maybe I'd really enjoy it. Maybe that is my new cozy hobby. That'll be your next one. And if you fuck it up, I mean, it's just then it's just more relevant for your interest in, exactly. in your podcast. It's exactly. just a shipwreck. Exactly.